especially designed to develop downforce in the very turbulent air coming over the body. But once set, they cannot be moved by the driver because of a rule that all aerodynamic devices must be immovable. Before skirts were invented, these wings were becoming very big. So removing skirts will probably put racing car design back to where it was around the mid-70s, when designers were trying all sorts of ideas. This was one, a car with six wheels. The four small ones at the front were an attempt to keep the nose down and reduce drag. It worked, but not well enough, it seems. Later, this crafty British idea stormed to victory. Although it looked conventional, it had a fan inside it to suck air out from the underneath of the car, creating mechanical downforce, like a vacuum cleaner. It worked too well and was quickly banned. But always the designers are searching for the same thing. Generally, there's going to be a search for more downforce for less drag again. Racing journalist Peter Windsor. We'll see lots of people trying to bridge the gap between the, the side of the car and the road. And everybody's there are going to be tremendous arguments about whether it's legal or whether it's illegal. Patrick Head, designer of the Williams. It'll be a new, just as it was for us when we first started running skirts, it'll be a completely new area to look into as achieve, trying to achieve as much an effect or greater uh, without skirts. So really what it'll mean is a, new, is a, a hiccup in the process of development that will slow us down for a short while, but... Uh, I'm sure one of the teams will hit upon a way to actually get back at least what they had before, if not more, and then all the rest of us, or them, depending on, on uh, uh, who it is that makes a breakthrough, uh, um, will have to follow. But for the first few races, these are the cars that Williams will field, skirts lifted. It's about midday, and Chief Engineer Neil Oatley watches a skirtless Jones almost come unstuck through the first corner. That's a reminder to turn off the electric fuel pump. Now the engine-driven pump has taken over. Now, Jones will try to beat his teammate Carlos Reutemann's lap time of 1 minute 6.1 seconds. Because it always takes more than a minute to lap the test circuit, only seconds to the first decimal point are flashed to the driver. It's a cold, miserable business. No skirts, the wrong tyres, a freezing wind, and rumours that the new Renaults lapped this track at one minute five seconds last week. Despite several determined laps, Jones gets nowhere near Reutemann's earlier lap times. They're talking tyres. The figures are the temperatures. It just feels like I'm getting no warmth in the tyres at all. Jones is depressed because he can't get them to warm up sufficiently to generate grip. Tires are rubber and rubber gets sticky. When they get hot, they stick, and when they stick, the car doesn't slide and you go quicker. This meter records the surface warmth of the tire after every outing. First, the temperature at the edge of the tire, and then in the center. All the temperatures are written down on a special slip of paper. The slip is handed to Jones and then to Neil Oakley. The 150. Is this the same set that Carlos had on, the same type of set that he had on when he did his time? No. 
These are bees, so we've got to set the seeds with the 15 inch fronts and the large rears. Are these the same compound as the controls we're running? As, as the controls we're running? No, I think they're slightly harder. Slightly harder. Yeah, I bet you they are. But do you want to try the softer springs with these tires? Normally, these tires would be changed for a softer compound because yeah. of the cold. But when Goodyear left, they took the alternative tires with them, including some new small radius tires. There are two types of racing tire. Wet weather tires with treads to grip through water, and these bald tires with a special surface compound that goes very sticky when hot. Of course, in the wet, these bald tires are lethal. We've either got to try the C's that we swap with arrows, yeah. see what they do, except it's the horrible fronts, or just uh, continue with the other car and see if we can learn something. Yeah, well, that's almost ready now. Because There's no point yeah, going around no. this with the gear ratios like this. Okay. No point at all. With perfect timing, a jaunty Frank Williams, the team boss, arrives. Morning. You all right? How are we doing? Very cool. Oh, Morning, Alan. We have left with different tyres as to what Carlos was testing with different fronts. So the continuity, we've got no continuity to work on. Had Carlos tried the, the, these tyres? Not the ones we're running on now. These are the standard tyre yeah, size, right? Just done, that's a 15 inch front. We've literally just done two laps just to see. Well, that's just why he was just for the comparison. Oh, I see. Yeah. And what would he have on before? What size did he have on before when he did five? He had the new small tyres. 47, 20, 20, 29, yeah. What's that, what's that a 10.5 inch front or a 9.5? 10.5. And Carlos is running what? 9.5. As the magnitude of the problem begins to dawn on Frank Williams, Alan Jones chips in. I mean, I wouldn't use them to put on the side of my boat to stop it bouncing up against the side of a pier. <laughs> <laughs> Only just constructive comment, Alan. <laughs> OK, we push the car in and change the springs again. Okay. The big tyres are making the gears too high. So they decide to put back last year's gear ratios to match last year's tyres. Being an optimist, I hope that either Pirelli or Michelin will come forward and pick up the other teams. Uh, and even if that happens, uh, people like ourselves, I don't think we're going to be particularly well treated by Michelin, given that Renault...